Welcome to this video tutorial on using pivot tables. First, let's start with what is a pivot table. A pivot table is a tool that is used in Excel to summarize data. This is especially useful when you have a lot of data and need to look at summary imaginary students. You can see the column headings, major, grade on exam, hours studied, grade point average, age, gender, credits earned, hours working, and student status. And student status is either full-time or part-time. Now let's say I want to answer the question, what is the average exam grade by major or by student status, full-time or part-time? This could be a time-consuming job to go through 50 rows of data. Imagine if we had a data set with thousands of students. Luckily, we have the pivot table tool that can help us to answer this and many other questions. To create a pivot table, First position your cursor in A1 and then go to the Insert tab and click on the Pivot Table command. A dialog box pops up asking for the range of data we want. We can see here that the range selected is already A1 through J51 and that takes care of all of my data. You can enter any range you want or you can select the range and Excel will type it in for you. You can see we also have selected New Worksheet. So go ahead, click OK, and we'll go over to the New Worksheet. Here's what it looks like. You can see on the right side, under where it says Pivot Table Fields, all the column headings are listed, Major, Grade on Exam, and so on. Now we need to decide which fields we want to add or average. In the Pivot Table list, we need to check the fields we want to include. So let's start by checking off Major. Once we check off major in the field list, it is added to the area for row labels. And on the worksheet, you can see that the data is arranged by majors in the rows. But there are no values for the data yet. Let's click and drag the heading grades to the values area. We could also check the box next to grades instead of clicking and dragging. Either way works. Now you can see instead of just rows with the various majors, we have values next to it. But the values look strange. These are supposed to be grades. Take a closer look and you will see that the heading label says sum of grades. So these numbers are the grades added up. That means if we took all 50 grades on the exam and added them up, we would get the grand total of 3,948. This might be useful for someone, but let's say we want to know how many students took the exam or the average grade in each major. To see how many students took the exam in each major, we would need to change the settings from sum to count in the values area on the lower right hand side of the pivot table field box. Now click on the drop down box and then a list of choices will appear. Choose from this list the last choice labeled value field settings by clicking on it. You can see in the dialog box that pops up, sum is highlighted and listed in the name box. Now we can choose count or average to get what we want. Let's do both. First, let's see what happens when we choose count. To do this, highlight count and then click OK. We can see the count of how many students majoring in accounting took the exam. It shows 7 out of 50. So the numbers listed are not the sums anymore, but rather the count of how many grades there are in each category. But we really want to know the average grade for each major. So let's go back to the lower right hand side and click again on the drop down box in the values area where it says count of grade. Then scroll to the value field settings like we did before. Click and choose from the list of what type of calculations you want. We see count is highlighted, but we want average. So click on average and then click OK. So let's click OK. Now you can see the averages by major. I don't like all the decimal places, so let's say I want to reformat the numbers in the cell to show only two decimal places. It looks a little messy the way it's displayed now. So to reformat the numbers to show only two decimal places, first highlight column B by clicking at the top where it says B. Then under Home, go to the Numbers group and click on the More Options drop-down arrow. A new dialog box comes up with the various formats. When the dialog box comes up, General is highlighted since that is Excel's default format. Choose Number, and you can see the default is two decimal places. That's what we want, so let's press OK. Now all the exam averages are listed to two decimal places, which is much nicer looking. 
Now let's add another variable to look at. Let's say we want to analyze the grades by student status. We have PT and FT, which stands for part-time and full-time status. Maybe we want to analyze the grades according to a student's part-time or full-time status. To do this, let's drag the student status label to the columns area. As soon as we do this, we can see the worksheet view has changed to include two columns of information for student status, one for part-time and one for full-time. There are no grades for part-time accounting and finance since all the majors in this sample were probably full-time students. We can see the number of students in each student category by going back to the value field settings and changing the setting from average to count. So let's do that. Let's go back to the value field settings and change the setting from average to count. We do this the same way we did before. Click on the down arrow and then choose value field settings and then change the setting from average to count. Click OK and you will see the count for each category of student status, part-time and full-time by major. We can analyze the data even further by applying a filter to the pivot table. Let's say we want to look at only the male students in this data set. To do this, drag gender to the filter area. As soon as you do this, you will see the gender filter added to the top of the pivot table. Right now, it says all in parentheses. To filter by a specific gender, click on the drop-down box. You will see a drop-down box with the choices. In this case, we can choose either male or female. To filter by male, click on male and then click OK. The pivot table now displays only the male students. As you can see, there are 25 male students. We can go back and change the field value settings to give us the average. Now you know the basic mechanics of using a pivot table. You can easily change or pivot the rows to columns and the columns to rows by dragging major to the column field and student status to the row field. Let's see what that would look like. Here you can see the rows and columns switched around. You might like the table better this way. All I did was switch the labels major and student status from rows to columns. This is one of the reasons this sort of table is called a pivot table, since you can pivot rows and columns to make the table look the way you want it to look. That covers the basics of pivot tables in Excel. Play around with all the options to get a feel for how you can create your own pivot tables. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you learned something.